Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us this morning in this session about ESG. I'm Angelica Coviello, Communication Manager at Talencia, and uh, here with me there is Sven Herbert, uh, Head of Analyst Services at Fosway. Good morning, Sven, and welcome. Good morning, Angelica. How are you? Good to see you. Fine, thanks. Fine. And then we are we have Silvio Petruzzellis, ACM partner learning manager. Thank you, Silverio, welcome. Thanks, Angelica, good morning. Good morning. So, again, this morning, let's talk about ESG, and we start with a question. What does the S in ESG stand for? Yes, Angelica, very good question. So, uh, ESG, I guess, is becoming increasingly important in, you know, sustainable investing. It can affect a company's financial performance, financial success. It's also important to get really good conditions, better conditions from banks nowadays. And so it is uh, that the S stands for social. So it refers to all the social dimensions of corporate operations and investments, and it focuses on you know, a company's relationships with its employees, with its suppliers and, and partners from a social perspective, and also the communicates, uh, the communities where the company operates in, right? So the local, you know, villages or cities or whatever, where the company has a site. And it covers a wide range of issues related to human capital, you know, for example, labor rights, employee relations, employee well-being, diversity, you know, it's a big uh, basket of, of topics, really. And, and do you have some example for, for the practical side of this for, for companies? Yeah, so I mean, there's a, it is a really wide topic, right? So I think the one of the challenges is actually even understanding what aspects are all affected because it is quite broad, right? So it Basically, you can think of it of a company's overall impact on society, on uh, the humans that live and work in, in these societies. And it's looking at, for ex like a few examples would be if we think about uh, employees, uh, we think about maybe some of the responsible supply chain practices that the company is putting in place. For example, a fashion brand is committing to like fair trade practices. Um, it only partners maybe with you know, suppliers that ensure fair wages, safe working conditions, um, that avoids child labor, um, and, and, and that is verified through regular independent mm -hmm. audits. Like, you know, this is one example. Others are, you know, fair treatment of your customers and suppliers. I already mentioned a little bit community engagement, but of course it also looks at employees, right? How do you treat your employees? How do you make sure that they feel well. So for example, like a tech company could implement flexible work arrangements, like maybe some mental health days, comprehensive health benefits and so on. So those, those are all examples of what it entails. Maybe another one would be around, I guess, diversity, equity and inclusion. So where you as a multinational corporate maybe launch some uh, targeted recruitment program to increase the rep presentation of underrepresented uh, groups in your workforce. You, you couple it maybe with a specific training around that for all employees so that you foster an inclusive culture. But it's also, you know, pay is affected. Like, you know, can you live from the income that you have as a, as a, as a worker? Um, do you get paid fairly? The EU, EU has also issued a directive on uh, fair pay uh, gender uh, pay equality acts and uh, so these are all things that are affected so you see it is a really broad um, spectrum yeah we, we see a very diversified range of topics of course and uh, i guess human resources departments play an important role in this because uh, i think and you you can confirm that uh, for example internal initiatives are, can be driven by uh, by, um, uh, so to say, uh, HR sensitive to these topics, and with the with the help of a a direction uh, driving and and uh, addressing these topics uh, on the overall organization, 
uh, a lot of, uh, of activities can be launched by uh, HR. What, what do you think about it? Yeah, so I guess ultimately you companies need to put a report together on this topic, right? So this is um, something that they um, need to include in some of their reporting. And for an HR department, they really play a, a, a very important role in shaping their ESG journey. And uh, they do this obviously through you know, their main purpose of existence, which is shaping human capital management. So instilling a strong corporate purpose, aligning the entire organization behind an ESG roadmap is, you know, not a small task by all means, right? And I think, so if, if you ask for some specific examples, then, I mean, we've already spoken a little bit about um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. So here you could maybe see that HR develops and implements and some practices that promote a diverse workforce and inclusive culture in the workplace and make sure that recruitment is not biased, that you have, so for your employees, that they have equal opportunities to advance their career, um, that they are fairly treated um, uh, during the process and, and that you treat all employees like this. And so to, the approach that HR then can take is to implement these DNI, for example, through a training program, making managers aware, um, you know, establishing maybe some resource groups with employees, using analytics in in maybe the HCM solution to kind of see who are who is getting promoted. Is it white males? Is it you know you know all those kind of uh, kind of things, right? And um, I think this is one of the important aspects. But as we have already seen, I guess, the topic is really broad. So is there any other areas you'd, you'd be interested in um, that I speak about those maybe? Yeah, I, I think you, you, you mentioned analytics, but generally speaking, uh, technology can help, especially in, in, uh, in big organization, medium or large organization, in which knowing people is a lot more difficult uh, than uh, in, in small organization where you usually are one uh, in, in the same place all, all together. And uh, technology can help in, uh, in supporting analysis and monitoring. Uh, so you, you can have uh, analytics dashboards to highlight certain aspects like uh, uh, gender pay problems or, or inequality in the, uh, not only in the salary treatment, but also in terms of uh, development initiatives, for example, and uh, in this, uh, in this, uh, to this extent, from from, from training to mm -hmm. personal development, uh, technology can help in uh, producing and distributing collaborative processes that allow everybody to participate in planning. Uh, the development initiative or in suggesting, for example, personalized training and having a, an eye on, uh, on uh, equality when uh, uh, it comes to uh, performance management practice, when you have to evaluate groups of people that mm -hmm. uh, needs to be treated, so to say, uh, equally without uh, any uh, possible bias in, uh, in judgment from managers or from uh, depending on other topics and I think technology play plays a role uh, an important role in helping and supporting the HR practices in this sense do you, do you agree yeah so it's I mean it's probably yes I, I totally agree but it's it probably starts with uh, making sure that you integrate ESG into your HR policies and practices so I think the first step is HR kind of needs to think about all the areas that are affected for them and then you need to embed the social responsibility principles into your HR policies, like like you said, like in performance management, in training, in recruitment, in in you know how you distribute benefits and and how you make them accessible. So I think this is the first step. But then to track and analyze some of the progress that you're making towards those, you can leverage technology. It is. Um, actually quite a new field. So um, Fosway, as an industry analyst, we uh, look at uh, obviously a lot of the vendors in the market, if not all, 
and you we we really um, ask them what functional what functionalities do you cover and it's an area which is emerging right you can't go to really as a, as an hr leader you can't really go to somebody's website and buy an esg module right this is for of finance course. this is possible but then it's more like this uh, on on the um, environmental aspects where you you know do carbon footprint calculations and all of that but for hr it is basically like you have to embed it across all of your hcm processes all of your hr processes and so you can't just go and oh i want to buy this is um, uh, or the social module or or, or whatever uh, for esg and then you're ready to go it is a combination of activities where hr leaders really need to kind of think through from the beginning what where can they embed it? Where do they need to embed it? And then how can their existing technology uh, support it? How can they use it in their performance discussion? How can managers um, be aware of the topic? So I think it starts with a culture of transparency and accountability, an open environment where employees feel valued and heard, where the organization is transparent about its ESG goals and progress. So the, you need to lead from the top. It needs to come from like the board saying, okay, this is important. And uh, now we add ESG goals into our performance management system, for example, right? And then everybody gets measured on those. But, uh, there, you know, and then systems can support you with maybe a library of goals or, you know, those kind of things. So it is something that you need to, you know, it's not just like, done like this it yeah. is a bigger project for hr to actually yeah, get it to work you, you're perfectly right there's there's no standard recipe for for, for this kind of things and uh, in conclusion we, we can say that technology can help in two aspects in my opinion one is supporting decision making so when companies uh starts with this uh with this uh, road in this road with this path uh technology can help in providing the right information Absolutely. for taking the right decision and the other aspect is the culture change can technology can provide a means to uh to to uh, how can i say send the right messages and and uh provide a framework for embedding the ESG principle into the HR practices. Uh, I think this, these are the two main aspects in which uh, a, an information system, for example, or a HCM system can help uh, in this sense. Yeah, so I think, of course, um, HCM systems are collecting a lot of data, right? So you could leverage that data and, and use it to support your progress on your journey if you want to achieve those ESG goals and set out to to get better at it. And so uh, data analytics for DE and I can help you um, obviously to to monitor you know uh, those kind of things that we've discussed. But also in uh, talent acquisition, there's maybe you know advanced algorithms. There's decisions that you make on how you uh, promote people or who you hire. And I think those kind of things are also easily reported on. So it's basically just you need a configurable dashboard of things to pull the things in from the different kind of modules or components that the solution has and provide an ESG kind of uh, overview for your, you know, if you're a large business for your like, like globally, but then also maybe on a regional level or on a country level or on a site level or wherever you're interested in, like uh, looking at this, probably throughout the system. And then in terms of um, some of the best practices that you can use it to streamline, there's maybe, you know, HCM solutions can actually help you to implement some of these kind of policies, for example. So if you think about work-life balance initiatives, work, flexible working, then people can maybe request that they work remotely um, or that they re work in an office on that day uh, next week or whatever. It can also help them uh, in, in you know, with the flexibility of their shift uh, schedules, for example. So those are examples of how you can use this technology to make it a, a more um, guided process for employees, right? So that if you have already worked uh, three night shifts, um, you, you don't really allow an employee to pick another one, for example, yeah, if they can pick or something like, you know, th this it depends on your in company policies, but it, it gives some, I guess, examples. And for learning, like you mentioned learning as well, I think this is also an important 
part uh, where like a learning system can provide the content that um, is relevant for employees to even be educated and informed about ESG because it's not a topic that is, you know, everybody is maybe um, completely familiar uh, with and aware of. So Absolutely. it is, it's definitely something where you can use the technology to, you know, then uh, for, yeah, look at your gender pay gap, but then also implement a compensation review process to reduce the gender pay gap, for example. So I think technology plays a really pivotal, pivotal role in this. Okay, uh, I think we, we, we could talk for hours on, on these topics. <laughs> and yeah. uh, thanks for it is quite broad. Now yeah. it's it's a it's a broad topic. Thanks, Sven, uh, Angelica. Thanks, thanks all of you, and thanks for everybody follow uh, this uh, this session. So see you next time and thank you Sven, thank you Silverio. Again. Have a, a good okay. day. Good thank day. you. Have a nice bye. day. Bye bye. Bye bye.